How are you? <sighs> Bit of a state, really. Um, I can't believe, can't believe I'm back here, to be honest. It's been quite emotional uh, knowing I was going to come on the show. Yeah. And um, thanks for inviting me on. But even, even this building, being at the BBC, that's yeah. obviously where my career started um, yeah. all those years ago. And this morning, where my career ended. So mm -hmm. it's, it's quite... <laughs> It's been quite a, quite a journey. Um, What's made you want to, to, to talk to us today? And it's lovely to have you here. Well, uh, I just wanted a quiet life and I was quite happy living my own life and away from the media and not pursuing any kind of um, TV jobs or anything. Um, but I just feel my reputation kind of follows me around. I became a kind of target. And when I was out in public, even though I was aware of myself and, and people I was with, um, things happened. Um, and there were, uh, people made allegations and stuff. And I just felt I never um, got the chance to speak out. So th when it happened this time, uh, I just felt uh, enough's enough. Um, it, has to, it has to stop. So I thought, I'll, I'll make a stand. Uh, once in a while, somebody has to do that. Yeah. So I, I've done interviews with papers and uh, I, I've come on here today to, to talk about what happened yeah. and, and the reason why it shouldn't happen again. Do you wish that um, those accused of, of sexual assault um, should be able to remain anonymous until proven guilty? I am living proof that it's, it's got to stop. You know, the, you can't have your life ruined uh, on the back of uh, false allegations. Um, it is difficult because with the, with, the, with the Ralph Harris case, it, is, it was only after it does they work, released it the has claim, worked but it was some people cases. that came forward after that. That's You're right, why Holly. he eventually was convicted. I, so it's, it's a difficult one. It is a difficult one, but I do think the police sometimes have enough evidence to charge somebody and I think there's I'm, I'm all for one for you know being named if you're charged yeah. I don't think you know you it should be uh, you should not be named until you're found guilty so yeah. I think there has to be a level of proof before your life is ruined it's not just people in the media it's innocent you know men and women whose lives have been ruined named and shamed because of false allegations yeah. that are becoming too prevalent now you know this didn't happen 10 20 years ago because of making a false allegation was a huge thing mm. Mm. but now I think the way that our country is and the way that people that make false allegations are looked after, you know, they are basically um, believed, and they should be, as long as with the accused should be believed as well. They should be equal uh, on both sides. But at the moment, the pendulum's far, swung far too much in, in favour of the, of the accuser. Well, the Crown Office and the Procurator Fiscal Service uh, spokesman, uh, uh, I want to say there was a sufficient uh, sufficiency of evidence to take the case to court. Well, I'm obviously going to dispute of that. Of course. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that was proved it, in court, yeah. that they didn't have the level of evidence. John, I, the reason I, I sit here on this sofa because of your misfortune, and the reason that I'm would, here is that. because of <laughs> it's because of it's because of what happened to you all those years ago. Yeah. So you must have thought it's happening again. Well, it's 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 it's, it's hard to you know take in. I can, I mean, I've I've thought about this long and hard, um, and the way I've kind of tried to put it into words is. You obviously watch Love Island. Mm -hmm. um, I, I view Love Island now, and there's the like, characters in there that I, I identify with. There's Dr. Alex. There's there's Adam, who's who's on later, mm -hmm. I believe, and um, and Jack. Now, when I was a boy, I was a Dr. Alex, very uncomfortable around women. Women didn't take any notice of me. I didn't take any notice of them. I was I was a bit of a geek. I was into my kind of music, and uh, I left school, not sexual experience at all. Became a, a successful DJ onto um, television and, and so I was the kind of Dr Alex, you know, very unaware of women, very awkward and then I became a kind of Adam overnight with all the women giving me all this attention and I, I just couldn't handle it. When I you mean, got onto TV? Yeah, it, just, it was too much, you know, I, I, I say that now, I know I was a bit of an idiot sometimes, you know, and, and I can only apologise if I ever was that. I said, but it was never anything illegal, I was never assaulting anybody. And then th I think just things got out of hand. Uh, my life obviously went off the rails a little bit and I couldn't handle uh, the off-life television uh, as well as handling the on TV. I mean, I just loved the job, I loved yeah. the world, I loved that. I was too much of a party boy and just too young to handle it all. And, and, so what and does, it was too much. What does this do then to you as a person? Because, like, you're human at the end of the day. To keep picking yourself up again, to have come off the back of that year, it's made your parents ill. I know they're yes. very close, particularly your mum. What does that do to you? Well, it's about surviving. It's just about keeping going. And, and I'm in bits at the moment. I mean, it's, it's affected me worse than anything ever. I don't think anybody won in the court that day. I mean, I didn't. I don't think uh, that, that my accuser did. Um, she never got into court. It was a horrible day for her. A horrible experience for everybody. So it's a case of putting the bits back together again and hopefully I can come through this uh, yeah. in one piece. 
I would not have been able to make it without mum and dad. You know, they've been unbelievable. And I've, I've put them through enough. <laughs> so hopefully that's it and uh, no more um, situations that I find myself in. And I've just got to be aware and um, I can't thank them enough for all they did. Would you like to be back on telly? Uh, <laughs> not really. No, I, I, I think, I, well, yeah, no, I don't think I can handle it. I mean, yeah, I, I, miss, I miss this. It's, this, is, this is great. It's really, it's really an experience. It's, it's, I feel like I'm in a parallel universe. Yeah, I bet you do. It's just bizarre. Um, I love the job, as you know, we had, a, we had a great time and I really regret, you know, breaking up our relationship with Fern and stuff, you know, it was such a horrible time and, if, and it, honestly, it feels like yesterday. It's just like, I, I just, I could close my eyes, I could, the odds queue's a bit bigger. We both can't see that well. But you've got a few more cameras. But yeah. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's quite something. I mean, um, it's, it's all about just survival, really, and, and, and keeping mum and dad happy and protected. And, I love and that's what I want to do. And a quiet life, I think. I think, yeah. you know, my time on TV is done. All right. Well, thank you for coming in to our sofa. To yes, it's very comfortable. Yeah, <laughs> see you back. Thank all you. Right. Thanks thank a lot. Thank, thank you. Much. Look after yourself.